Today, our alliance remains a bulwark of global security and stability, as it's been for more than seven decades. NATO is stronger, more energized, and yes, more united than ever in its history. Indeed, more vital to our shared future. It didn't happen by accident. It wasn't inevitable. When Putin and his craven lust for land and power unleashed his brutal war on Ukraine, he was betting NATO would break apart. He was betting NATO would break. He thought our unity would shatter at the first testing. He thought Democratic leaders would be weak, but he thought wrong. Faced with the threat, <laughs> faced with the threat, the peace and stability of the world, to the democratic values we hold dear, to freedom itself, we did what we always do. The United States stepped up, NATO stepped up, our partners in Europe and the input, and then in the Indo-Pacific stepped up. All across the world, they stepped up. And we're ready. We were ready because we stood together. In the months leading up to the war, as Putin amassed his forces on the Ukrainian border and laid the groundwork for his brutal invasion, it was, I was in constant contact with my fellow leaders of the G7 and the European Union and NATO, constantly. We warned the world what Putin was planning. Even some in Ukraine didn't believe we were what we had our intelligence community found. We made sure NATO was prepared to deter any aggression against any member state. We pursued intense diplomacy with Russia, seeking to avert this terrible war. And when Russia bombs began to fall, we did not hesitate to act. We rallied the world to support the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their liberty and their sovereignty with incredible dignity. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Think about it. Think about what they're doing. After nearly a year and a half of Russia's forces committing terrible atrocities, including crimes against humanity, the people of Ukraine remain unbroken, unbroken. <laughs> Ukraine remains independent. It remains free. And the United States has built a coalition of more than 50 nations to make sure Ukraine defends itself both now and is able to do it in the future as well. Since this war began, I've stood with President Zelensky because I just spent about an hour with him, both in Washington, in Kyiv, in, in, in Hiroshima, and now in Vilnius, to declare to the world what I say again. We will not waver. We will not waver. I mean that. Our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. We all want this war to end on just terms, terms that uphold the basic principles of the United Nations Charter that we all signed up to, sovereignty, territorial integrity. These are two pillars of peaceful relations among nations. One country cannot be allowed to seize its neighbor's territory by force. Russia could end this war tomorrow by withdrawing its forces from Ukraine, and wrecking its international borders, and ceasing its attacks on it, its inhumane attacks on Russia, I mean, by Russia on Ukraine, against its children, women and children, its military. Unfortunately, Russia has shown thus far no interest in the diplomatic outcome. Putin still wrongly believes that he can outlast Ukraine. He can't believe it's their land, their country, and their future. And even after all this time, Putin still doubts our staying power. He's still making a bad bet that the conviction and the unity among the United States and our allies and partners will break down. He still doesn't understand that our commitment, our values, our freedom is something he can never, never, ever, ever walk away from. It's who we are. I mean, it's who we are. It's who we are. Throughout this horrific war, the people of Lithuania, together with our Baltic brethren, have been among the fierce champ most fierce champions of Ukraine's right to a future of its own choosing, one that is free because you live so long with freedom denied. Many of you who are older know better than anyone how precious the right to determine your own future is. 
precious to people everywhere, everywhere. Not just in Ukraine, but Belarus, Moldova, Georgia, and all the places around the world where people continue to fight to make their voices heard. So my message, my message to all of you tonight is keep it up, keep it going. Keep reminding the world of hope that Lithuania embodies, and that's what you embody, hope, in this country. Oh, I really mean it. I'm not joking. I mean this sincerely. We must never forget how much this matters and never, never give up on a better tomorrow. The defense of freedom is not the work of a day or a year. It's the calling of our lifetime, of all time. We are steel for the struggle ahead. Our unity will not falter, I promise you. <laughs> Folks, as I look around the world today at a moment of war and peril, a moment of competition and uncertainty, I also see a moment of unprecedented opportunity. Unprecedented opportunity. Opportunity to make real strides for the world of greater peace and greater prosperity, liberty and dignity, equal justice under the law, human rights and fundamental freedoms, which are the blessing and birthright of all of humanity. That, that is the world the United States is working toward. And it's one we'll only reach if we do it together. And I mean together. We need to take the same spirit of unity, common purpose, determination, that we have demonstrated in our response to Russian aggression in Ukraine and bring more partners along as we continue working to build a world we want to live in and a world we want for our children. My friends, at the most fundamental level, we face a choice. It's not hyperbole, we face a choice. A choice between a world defined by coercion and exploitation, where might makes right, or a world where we recognize that our own success is bound to the success of others. When others do better, we do better as well. Where we understand that the challenges we face today, from the existential threat of climate change to building a global economy where no one gets left behind, are too great for any one nation to solve on their own. And that, to achieve our goals and meet the challenges of this age, we have to work together. And I mean this sincerely, the world's changing. We have a chance to change the dynamic. That's why I've been so focused as president on rebuilding and revitalizing the alliances that are the cornerstone of American leadership in the world. These past years, we brought the transatlantic partnership to new heights, reaffirming the importance of the relationship between Europe and the United States as an anchor to global stability. The idea that the United States could prosper without a secure Europe is not reasonable. We've also elevated it. That's, it really isn't. Not a joke. I sometimes, well, we also elevated and deepened American alliance in the Indo-Pacific with Japan, the Republic of Korea, Australia, the Philippines, which provide critical security and deterrence in that vital region of the world. Through our Quad partnership, it's a fancy way of saying our partnership with Australia, India, Japan, and the United States. We're bringing major democracies of the region together to cooperate, keeping the Indo-Pacific free and open, prosperous and secure. We've demonstrated during this NATO summit with, with Indo-Pacific partners joining us for the second year in a row. We're working to deepen connections between the Atlantic and Pacific democracies so we can better work together toward the shared values we all seek. Strong alliances, versatile partnerships, common purpose, collective action to meet our shared challenges. The world has shrunk. That's how we build a future to see when we share and know we share challenges and work together. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the MCAD TV family. Please like and share MCAD TV. We love you all. Please support MCAD TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.